Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video I am going to be carrying out a full service on this 1994 Triumph Sprint 900 S. Um, this will include all three spark plugs, being a triple, it only has three. Oil filter and uh, obviously the oil as well. Um, for this I've gone for the Motor 5000 10W40. 10W40 is the spec for this bike. Um, and then we've gone with the uh, we've gone with the semi synth. Now this uh, this behemoth of a box here actually contains the air filter, and surprisingly enough, this is the air filter. Now <laughs> it took me ages to realise that Triumph don't sell the standalone filter as any other bike or car that you've ever seen in your life. You actually have to physically buy this whole air box section which quite frankly is ludicrous and at nearly 62 pounds not exactly what you would call cost effective especially when air filters are supposed to be replaced at every service uh, every service interval so yeah we had to uh, go to a dealer for this as you can see it's a genuine triumph part um you can get uh, aftermarket options from the likes of k and n and powerflow and such and such um that will uh, involve you splitting the box um you know, it, it, it's merely held together with some torque screws. It does come apart, but um, to fit a K&N or a power flow item, being a carbureted bike would require rejetting of the carbs. And by the time you factored in all of that sort of stuff and any dyno time that's required in order to tune it correctly, you, you know, you're getting into quite a serious amount of money. So going for the 62 pound uh, genuine filter option seemed like, uh, seemed like a good idea at the time. Anyway, guys, thanks for stopping by. Let's, uh, let's tear into it. Right then, um what we want to do first before we uh, before we attempt to drop the oil is just run the bike up to temperature just to thin the oil out a little bit and make it easier to drain. Um, this bike has not been run for a little while so it may take a little bit of effort to get it to go. Um, I have just fitted the uh, the new battery um, so let's see how we get on. A little bit of choke and we'll crank her, see how we get on. <laughs> Okay, so oil's up to temperature, turn the engine off. What we need to do next is obviously drain the oil. So uh, what I'll do, I'll grab an oil pan and we'll head underneath the bike and have a look at where the drain plug is. Okay, so in order to drain the oil, the sump plug is just under here. Just there. This sucker is a 12 mil Allen which is a pretty mental size. Not a lot of people will have these in a regular standard um, socket set. So you may need to uh, invest in a 12 mil Allen. Um, but yeah, that's the, um, that is a sump plug. So let's, uh, let's whip it out. And um, here's, my, here's my nice drain pan, ready to, ready to go. So let's drop her out. That was tight. Blimey. That did not want to budge. Thought it was going to start twisting the bike on its uh, on its centre stand. Then. Right. Let's uh, get the oil out. Obviously, bearing in mind it will be hot, so watch those fingers. Here it comes. And looking at it, I would say there's quite a bit of fuel in that oil. Yeah, there looks to be uh, a fair amount of fuel in that oil. It looks quite thin, so I may need to uh, 
may need to uh, service those carburetors. Well, I definitely need to service the carburetors. It's been standing for an awful long time. Um, and I would guess that the fuel, uh, the, uh, the, the float heights in the car bowls aren't quite set right. But then saying that though, it's not uncommon for a bike, a carburetted bike standing for this long to allow fuel into the oil. So what I need to do, obviously empty this out because um, there's only 3.75 litres of uh, oil in in the uh, in the Sprint 900, and this is a uh, this is a four litre pan, so it should have uh, should have taken it all. So I'm going to empty this out, and then we'll drain the rest. Right, last little bit. Yeah, you can see how how thin the oil is. Yeah, it's a shame, but not uncommon. A little sludge on the uh, on the plug. A little bit clean off. Right, there's a uh, copper washer. Obviously, I'm going to throw that one in the bin because we're going to use a brand new one. Right, once that's uh, once that's finished draining out, I'll dispose of this or we'll deposit it in my uh, in my large um, large bottle that I've got um, ready to uh, ready to go to the recycling centre, and then we'll look at getting the uh, we'll look at getting the old filter off. Getting minging already. Obviously, you can see there's a there's a little bit of evidence of oil leaks on this bike, um, but being a Triumph, obviously if uh, if it's not leaking oil, that generally means there's none in it. So uh, yeah, but um, yeah, I'm gonna have to uh, investigate those, see if we can get to the bottom of those leaks. Um, the bike's done quite a few thousand miles now. It's um, as I said, a '94, so it's uh, she's knocking on a little bit. But uh, yeah, we'll get it back to her uh, back to her best. Right. Okay, we're uh, nearly at the uh, at the point where we can um, take this pan away. Right, what I'll do, I'll uh, dispose of this oil, and then I'll bring you back in when we're uh, we're about to drop the filter off. Okay, while the uh, the last few drops of oil are dripping into the drain pan, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the uh, oil filter element. Now it's a it's not a spin-on type, um, like on the majority of Japanese bikes. This one's actually a cartridge, and it's behind this um, behind this panel here. 17 mil. I imagine this is quite tight as well. If the sump plug was anything to go by, <laughs> actually, it wasn't as tight. As you can see, we're getting a bit more oil out now. So keep the drain pan handy. And spin her off. Well, let's let the majority of that drain into the pan, and then we'll uh, finish off. There we go. Right. And there is the oil filter. Now let's drop that down there. Move somewhere more comfortable and we'll have a little chat about it. Let's have a look at this. Okay, washer on the top. Washer on the bottom. And there is your... Uh, your oil filter, this HF192, which is the uh, same model as the one that I've purchased, so we've got the right one. And as you can see on here, we've got a little 
spring and all the way around here we have an o-ring um, which needs to be replaced and yeah the uh, the o-ring itself is actually included in the oil filter kit so we'll um, get the oil filter kit out and have a look at uh, all the parts okay there's actually two uh, washers on this if you pull the center bolt out there's another little o-ring just there as well and again that will be included in with the kit so let's pop that one off because that one's uh, that one's toast get this this one off give her a good clean off All over clean. Don't expect to be able to whip my dinner off it, but it's nice to put clean parts back on. Okay, right then. There we are. HF192. Put the old ones inside the box. Okay, what we need to do is we need to fit the seals. First one goes on the bolt. And fits in its little groove just there. And then this one simply fits into the little groove in the filter plate. Now, she doesn't want to sit in there all too well because it's got a slight bend in it. So what I'll do is obviously have to be careful as we screw it on that it is seated otherwise we'll have an oil leak and naturally that's a disaster what i need to do just put a little bit of clean oil around these two rings and then uh, we can put it all back together with the new filter and then we can fit it back into the bike right then clean engine oil a little bit on the end of the finger and run it round what this will do it help make sure that the uh, the seal doesn't pucker up and that it as you as you're screwing it in it stays in in its location it doesn't pucker up and pinch um, and then obviously cause a leak right then what we need to do next is pop these components back together like so the spring goes on next then a washer, then the filter, making sure that the little seals inside don't pop off. There we go. Then the washer on the top. Right, that is now ready to reinstall on the bike. Obviously, I need to do that, making sure that the seal doesn't come out of this um, out of this lip and stays where it's supposed to be. So uh, let's get that back in the bike now, and uh, then we can um, look at putting some plug back in. Right, as I said, I do need to ensure that that seal does stay where it's supposed to be, and that it doesn't come out of its groove. As you can see, it's sitting slightly proud at the moment. Hopefully as a winder on, she will go into the groove where it's supposed to be. Yeah, we're doing all right. It's going in where it's supposed to. Yeah, cool. Okay, there we are. Right, I'm just gonna knit that up sl slightly. Yeah, 
There we go. Right, all I need to do now, get my torque wrench up, check the manual for the torque spec, and um, just uh, torque it up to spec. Right then, I've got uh, my torque wrench. It is 18 newton meters for the filter center bolt. There we go. Not too tight at all. And hopefully we've got a good seal all the way around there. Right then, next thing we need to do is um, fit the uh, fit the sump bolt. Right, time for the, uh, the sump bolt. As you can see, I've given it a nice clean. We've got a brand new washer here, which I've annealed to soften it up. And let's fit. Now, these, this, uh, this sump bolt was actually quite tight when I uh, removed it. And the manual says 48 newton meters. It actually felt like it was a bit tighter than 48, if I'm being, if I'm being honest. Um, but I will uh, ensure that I do it to the correct spec. Let's get the oil pan out of the way. We don't need that anymore. There, that's easier. Right. Okay. Torque wrench set to 48 newton meters. And there we go. So, that is everything underneath here that we need to do. Um, it's pretty straightforward because obviously there's no fairings to take off on this particular model. So, um, you've got really, really good access uh, to everything under here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get some more wipes and try and um, clear off um, the majority of this gunge, um, just to, uh, just to, um, you know, obviously just to clear the bottom up because it is pretty filthy at the moment. Um, anyway, let's move on to the let's move on to the next step, which um, will involve taking off the tank and uh, getting to the air filter and the spark plugs. Okay. What I've done is um, obviously the oil filter and the oil filler screw, um, they're both refitted. Um, I haven't refilled the oil yet, I'll do that at the end. What we're going to do next is um, get access to the air box um, with the air filter inside and the plugs themselves. One thing I will point out on this, this bike does have a fuel tap. Now we could have avoided having fuel in the, uh, in the oil where the bike's been sat for so long by, um, by turning this tap off. If we turn the tap off, no uh, no fuel will flow to the uh, to the carburetors and therefore it won't um, find its way into the cylinders seat past the uh, piston rings and end up in the in the sump and mix with the oil so um, Obviously if you've got a bike with a fuel tap Good idea to uh, use it if you're gonna lay your bike up over winter or anything like that right anyway cracking on what we need to do is um, Remove the seat which on this particular one is um, <laughs> removed remove just by pulling on the cable because the lock itself is broken pop that to one side and then um, what we need to do is remove the grab rail one bolt the bolt right sit that to one side okay now then to get the panels off these two allen headed bolts here should go through plastic parts of the panel but as you can see they are actually broken as often happens with plastics um, but the rest of the uh, the rest of the panel itself is merely held in with the push fit the push fit clips that go into these rubber bungs like that so that's kind of little knobble that goes into these plastic bungs and that's all that holds the rest of the panel onto the bike. So let's pop that off, put this to one side, then we can look at the tank. Right then, tank. In order to get the tank off, if we look down here at this hinge, you can see a line of three bolts there. There's another three on this side, exactly the same. The middle one holds the, um, the mounting bracket to the subframe. 
the outer two actually hold the tank to the bracket. So you only need to remove the two outer ones and um, the tank will come off. Um, the front of the tank on these is fairly rudimentary. It's literally just a hook um, up by the headstock. There's no, um, you don't have any bolts holding it on like on a, on a Japanese sports bike, for example. Um, so if we lift all these screws off, Okay, with those bolts removed, we can lift the back of the tank out and slide it backwards. And you see here how the front of the tank's mounted into these recesses here either side and these little rubber bungs. Um, fairly, um, you know, it does the job. Um, it's a bit different to uh, what you would normally expect. Uh, normally you would expect to see a couple of um, bolts at the top of the headstock. Right then, what we need to do is obviously disconnect all the gubbins for the tank, the breather, is obviously there. This is the fuel level sender um, for the uh, for the um, gauge, uh, so that the uh, the light will come on when the uh, when the fuel's low. And disconnect both of those. Obviously, somebody's been in here before because this isn't standard wiring. And then the next thing we want to do is um, we want to disconnect the uh, disconnect the fuel lines from the tap. So um, with the tap off. We shouldn't have any problems with fuel leaking out of it, as I've already turned it off. And there we go. That is the uh, fuel tank removed. So let me put this somewhere safe so we don't damage it, and then we can look at the next stage. Right then. With the tank off, as we can uh, see, we've got now access to the top of the engine almost. Um, in order to get access to the plugs, um, these two covers here need to be removed. And in order to do that, there's four little hex head bolts. One there, one there, and the same on this side. And that will allow us to remove these panels. These pop off as well, so we don't lose them. And there we are. We can see the top of the uh, top of the spark plug recess. Popping out, popping the boot off, and down in there we can see the plug. And the other one, right in the middle, right below the uh, spine of the frame. And then the other one, in exactly the same place, on this side, underneath this panel. Once we've got these bolts out. And there we go. So now we've got access to all three plugs. We can uh, we can change them out, and uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll all will be right with the world. So let's um, let's get the new plugs and get the uh, get the old ones whipped out. Right then. Okay. So we've got the tank off. We've got access to all the plugs now. Um, what I'll do, I'll have a quick chat about the plugs themselves. Um, this is the part number for this particular bike. Uh, in case you uh, do want to buy any um, plugs themselves now the gapping on the plugs uh, on this particular model the gapping according to the manual is to be between 0.8 and 0.9 of a millimeter um, on modern plugs I don't tend to really bother checking them um, I have done in the past and never found one to be out of spec however just for the purposes of this narrative what I'll do I will um, just show you uh, the uh, the, plot, the spark plug gap. Now, feel a gauge, I've got a 0 0.8 and a 0 0.9. It said it was to be between 0 0.8 and 0 0.9. Now, what you should get is a light drag through. I'll put the 0 0.8 through first, and there is ever such a slight drag as I pull the feeler gauge through, ever so, ever so slightly. So I'm content that that is 0 0.8 of a mil. And the 0.9 doesn't fit. Okay, so 0 0.8 of a mil does. Ever such a light drag, so yeah, I'm happy with the uh, with the plug gap. 
Um, I will check the other two just to be sure. However, I am uh, I am content by those. Um, yeah, the only the only likelihood um, that you're going to receive a plug that is uh, not gapped correctly is if they've been dropped on the floor. And they're quite well protected. They've got a little cardboard sleeve on them. They're quite well protected in the packaging. So yeah, so there we go. 0.8 to 0.9 mil on this particular model. Obviously, every model of bike is different. You need to check the manual to make sure that the gaps um, are correct on the plugs. Right then, let's, um, let's pull all of the boots off the, uh, off the plugs, put them to one side. go and uh, let's get them out now another thing that I will say about um, Triumph plugs uh, all the plugs for this particular model anyway is they're a little unusual in their uh, in their size now in my uh, in my generic socket set I do have two spark plug tools one's a 10 mil one's a 14 mil now these will remove pretty much well every spark plug imaginable um, except for this one uh, as you can see, it's far too big for the 14 and the 10 doesn't fit. So with that in mind, um, what I've had to do is use a 18mm deep socket instead. Um, the only uh, disadvantage to using a regular deep socket is it doesn't have the rubber insert which grips onto the plug. So um, when you come to removing it, um, you'll need a magnet or something in order to pull it out. So uh, yeah, that's worth bearing in mind. Obviously, you can get 18mm um, spark plug sockets uh, at an auto factors, but they don't generally come in, uh, in a kit, uh, you know, a generic socket set. So that's worth bearing in mind. Right then, let's, um, let's crack on with the uh, spark plug replacement. Right then, obviously the two outer plugs, uh, access isn't a problem. The one underneath the spine of the frame, uh, we are gonna have to uh, mess around a little bit to uh, be able to get into it. Um, I think actually what I'll do is use this universal joint right here. And that will give me good purchase on the plugs. The plugs themselves aren't particularly tight. Some people like to absolutely hammer them home. They're only supposed to be done up to 18 Newton meters. So bear that in mind. You over tighten the spark plug and you'll just strip the threads out of the head. Um, aluminium heads with a steel uh, with a steel plug in. It, it won't take much. So just uh, just bear that in mind. Right, once that's all the way out, that one is. Next one. Let's swap this around so we can get into the frame. I reckon if we configure it. Like so. We may be able to get in there a little better. Let me drop the socket in. And then follow up with the tool. And there we go. With the universal joint, we're in. And there we are. Always good to keep a universal joint handy for encounters such as these. socket okay now let's uh, let's get all the plugs Two enough. That's 
better. And there we go. That's all three. Have a look at them. They are quite uh, they are quite sooty, but they're not terrible. I've seen a lot worse. Um, yeah. And these are uh, NGK ones as well, so we're uh, replacing like for like, same part number. Let me pop that one in my pocket. Okay, right. Let's grab the other three plugs. And one at a time. We'll fit them into the cylinders. You will notice that they haven't come with the cap that um, a lot of plugs come with. Um, in some, in some, on, on some plugs, you, you'll find that there's a cap here that needs to be removed. These didn't actually come with it because they don't require it. But this particular model, obviously, um, comes like that. So let's feed them into each of the wells. Next one. I would advise against just dropping them into the wells. Um, obviously, a gapped plug can be ungapped by just allowing it to fall in. If you uh, if you if you do so, um, just just gently gently drop them in to the wells. There we go. Right now. What we want to do is we want to uh, tighten each one up to 18 newton meters. Now, it's important that you get each of these plugs started in the head before you start leaning on it with the tools, because um, it's so easy to to cross thread them. And obviously, if you cross thread them, you're in a world of hurt. Um, because you're looking at uh, affecting a repair on the cylinder head and you don't really, really be wanting to do that on a Sunday afternoon. So get them all up to touch. This one's going to be a little bit more awkward. That's all three up to touch now. What we need to do next is talk um, is um, talk them up to spec. Now, as I said before, it's 18 newton meters. Now, what we're actually attempting to do here is um, obviously talk them in, talk them in to the correct spec so that we're not over tightening them into the head and damaging the threads. But ultimately, this little washer here is a crush washer. Now, on this one, it's being crushed already. Um, I could have showed you on the brand new one what they look like, but that crush washer there is what we're attempting to actually talk. The plug against that washer serves two purposes obviously it makes a gas tight seal um, for the cylinder but also prevents ingress of water into the cylinder head now when people have problems with spark plugs um, seizing in uh, cylinder heads it's more often than not in my experience where somebody's removed the plug and then screwed it the same plug back in without replacing it with a brand new one now these these washers really are only a you know they're a one shot deal so that's partially the problem why uh, water is allowed to get in. Worth bearing in mind. Anyway, let me get the torque wrench out and um, we'll torque these plugs up. Right then, all plugs in up to touch. <coughs> what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start with the middle one because that's the most difficult. Got a uh, universal joint. Let's get her on. And the torque wrench is set to 18 newton meters. So don't overdo it. Newton meters. Let's uh, disassemble all the tooling. 
it is really quite awkward to get into this one. One thing you don't get with a four cylinder machine, obviously, is um, the fact that one of the plugs is underneath the frame. Uh, okay, next one. need is a little magnet just to recover the tool. We'll do the one in number three next. That's all three spark plugs installed. Okay, right. All we need to do is just uh, put all the um, caps back in, but what I'm gonna do is leave them off for the moment because uh, as part of the service and we need to do a valve clearance. So there's no point in fitting these because the, uh, the cam cover does need to come off. So I'll leave them to one side and then what we'll do is we will look at removing the carburetors and the air box because um, in order to get the air box off, the carbs have to come off. With the carbs off, I'm going to strip them down, give them a good clean because they probably never had one. Um, I've got an ultrasonic cleaner, so I'll uh, I'll throw them all in there, and um, yeah, they should uh, they should come back to uh, good as new. Okay, before we start the faff with the uh, the carburetors and the airbox, as I said a second ago, what we're going to do first is I'm going to fill up the uh, the sump with oil. Um, <clears throat> on this model, the, uh, the there is a dipstick. <clears throat> There we are, dipstick which is uh, integral to the filler cap. And obviously we've got an upper and a lower mark. So what we need to do is fill the engine with oil. Now the um, the level on this is supposed to be checked when warm. Um, and obviously it's not gonna be. So what we'll do, we'll just top it up. Um, it takes 3.75 litres um, to fit. I think it's 3.75 litres from a rebuild. So it's probably more like three and a half litres. So what I'll do, I'll stick uh, just below three and a half litres in. Um, we'll check the level. And then later, once I've um, started the bike, run it up to temp, we'll check the level again and then top up as required. Okay, so let's uh, get some oil in. Obviously, once, uh, once we've got oil in the sump, we'll, we'll check to make sure we haven't got any leaks from the filter housing and the, uh, the sump plug. Okay, that is approximately three and a half liters yeah just probably just over three and a half liters of oil um that'll do for now that'll do for now um, and what i'll do i'll dip it once we drain it off okay right one thing i do want to uh, mention uh, i was talking about the uh, oil capacity it's actually written on a uh, on a label here engine oil change with filter 3.75 liters so it does take 3.75 liters um, obviously the uh, the gauge on the side of the bottle isn't 100 percent accurate so i do want to um i do want to use the dipstick just to be certain and with this particular bike you actually screw it in to do the uh the dip check it's not a case of just dropping it down and yeah, we were. I was, it was showing at the top, um, at the top marker, um, and that will that will do for now. Um, what I'll do, 
once we've finished everything else, we can uh, run up to temp and obviously make sure that the level is correct. Um, right, moving on to uh, what we originally said we were going to do next, which is the airbox and the carburetors. So um, what we need to do is disconnect all the um, all the clamps uh, front and rear. There's one there on the airbox, one there, and the same on the, um, the other uh, two carbs, both the middle one and the other side. Um, and then we've got a couple of um, cables that go um, to the choke. You can see here, you'll see the choke activate. Um, that is cable operated. And also the throttle comes down to this point here. This is the throttle cable that goes into this tube. So what we need to do is we need to disconnect all of that and then we should be able to remove them from the bike.